Hi first year, welcome to your first lesson at Woodmill High School of Computing Science. We're going to be looking at Scratch basic animation programming. Now many of you may have already experienced Scratch at primary school, but we're aware that some of you haven't and it's going to be um, a resource you'll need to use over your next few years in computing. So we thought it would be worthwhile getting you doing some Scratch at home. So if you haven't done so already, please make sure that you make your way to your Show My Homework and download your worksheet for today's um, or sorry, this week's lesson. If you can't download it or you prefer to write it on paper, you can always do this on a bit of scrap paper and then um, upload it to show my homework. OK, the first box on your worksheet has got a place for you to fill out the answer to this question. So for those of you who have used Scratch, this might be a bit easier, but if not, take a guess. So your first question is, have you heard of Scratch before and what do you think it is used for? It may be worthwhile pausing the video just now so you can have a little time to think about it and fill out your answer before continuing. OK, hopefully you've now got an answer to the question. The official answer is that it's a software development environment where you can basically create your own programs, animations, games or any other type of thing. OK, it's a build your own block. So it's got lots of blocks for you to pull out. You don't have to be an amazing programmer to use it. And it's really fun and user friendly. OK, today's lesson, these are the things we're going to focus on. We want to make sure that you guys can access the Scratch environment, first of all. We want to be able to make sure that you can navigate around the environment successfully, nice and easily. We want to know that you can import or draw your own backgrounds, sprites and their specific costumes. And we want to identify different categories of code that you're going to use over the remainder of this unit. First things first, you need to download uh, sorry, you need to create a free account. You can do this by going to scratch.mit.edu and clicking on the option that says join Scratch. You may already have an account, in which case feel free to use that. Once you've joined by using um, a valid email address and entering some um, basic details like year of birth and um, a username for you to use. You're then going to, once you're logged in, go to the Create button to take you to the official Scratch creation page. Now, this is what the Scratch environment looks like at the moment. So this is slightly different to any downloaded versions you might have used at primary school or um, in computing classes already. What I'm going to do in a second is walk you through how to use a lot of this environment. But at the moment, I'd like you to have a play about and see if you can do the following things without me helping you. So can you work out how to update a backdrop from the library or insert a sprite from the library? So that's one that already exists within the Scratch environment. Are you able to work out how to draw your own sprite? If you've managed to do this, can you get any of your sprites to move across the screen, get them to talk perhaps? change the look of them, their costume, their colour, their size, or perhaps get them to do some rotation by spinning in a circle. If you are really confident in doing all these things, go ahead and try and make a short, short story or animation. What I'm going to do now is show you around the environment. So if you haven't had a go, pause the video now, go away, have a play about with it, try to create um, a short story or animation. Okay. Here is my Scratch um, loaded in in my Mrs Jean's account and I've opened up just a brand new blank Scratch file. Now I want you to point you to some important parts in the environment. Okay, This here on the right hand side is really important. That's what we refer to as the Scratch stage. So this is where your game or your animation or whatever you're going to create your program is going to take place. OK, now you can view that in quite a big format like it is just now, which is this middle button here. You can shorten it to make it a little bit smaller if you're going to have quite complex code. OK, or this button on the right here, when you've finished your game or animation, you can toggle to make that full screen to play um, your animation on um, the big screen. OK, the green flag is used to start your animation. And when your program is running, if you want to stop at any point, you click on the red stop sign. OK. Underneath this stage, you've got what we call the sprite list. Now, basically, at the moment, we've only got one Scratch Cat sprite. The sprites are the different um, characters or objects that you have within your game or your animation. OK, um, you can delete them by clicking on the little bin button or you can add more by hovering over the cat head and then selecting one of the options. You can upload a sprite from some picture that you have saved or you've created. You can choose a random sprite by clicking the surprise button. You could paint your own sprite 
or you could choose a sprite from the sprite library, which we'll come back to a little bit later on. On the right hand side of the sprite list, you've got your backdrop stages. So you might have different backdrops that change throughout the game or animation. At the bottom, you can do the same again, upload an, um, a background, choose a surprise one, draw your own or choose one from the library. And there's lots of things built in for you to be able to use them. Now, depending on which sprite you're clicked on in the sprite list, if you have a number of different sprites, it gives you some information about them. So their default names are sometimes there. If they don't have a good name, like sprite one, I would always suggest you change this. So this is a cat sprite. So I'm going to call it the cat and you can see it updates below the cat picture itself. Next to the name, you've got X and Y coordinates, and that's telling you where that cat is within that whole stage. The point zero zero is the very middle of the stage, and then it branches out and uh, up and down the way for the rest of the coordinates, which we'll cover in a later lesson. The cat is default to set in direction 90, which is 90 degrees from up and down, which is facing this way. OK, it's size 100, but you could change this to make it larger or smaller. And then you can hide or show a sprite by clicking these two buttons here. OK, so lots of options in the sprite list. Over on the left, we've got three tabs. We've got the coding tab, which you can see is broken down into different subsections, each of which have their own specific color. Some of the ones that we'll be working closely with over the next few weeks is motion, looks, which um, is used for speech and changing the look and color and things of your character. We've got sound, which can be used to um, use sound effects or make drums or background noises, etc. We've got events, which allow you to run um, each of your blocks of code. We've got the control ones, which are used to allow you to make to do things like to wait or to make choices within your programming or to get something to repeat something a number of different times. And then we've got some other options which we'll be using a little bit less of, like sensing, operators, variables to store things like scores, etc. And then um, our own blocks. OK, so those are all split up and they have their own individual colors. And we'll talk about how those are used in a wee second. The second tab along we've got is the Costumes tab. The Costumes tab is allowing you to change the look of your sprite. You'll notice that the, the sprite um, cat has got two different costumes, one with the legs spread out and one with them slightly closer together. If you move between the two, you can see over on the right hand side, the cat almost looks like he's running or walking. OK, now at the moment, they're just called costume one, costume two. Again, you can change the name of these. So there's something more appropriate. If you wanted to, you might want to call them walk one and walk two. It's entirely up to you. OK, now the online editor for Scratch is a lot more powerful than previous versions you may have used. So you can select parts of your drawing and move that about if you wanted to. Um, or you can copy and paste the sprite, so you've got more than one copy. You can delete parts, you can flip it so it's facing another way. Just remember that when you do make adjustments to that costume, you're only changing one costume. So you can see that I've got two different cats here facing in different directions, and that might cause bugs later on in the program. OK, so um, it's up to you. It's easier for changing things like color than to change your sprites fully. But you can make lots of adjustments, so you can make um, adjustments here. The last tab at the top is your sounds tab, and the cat comes with a meow sound. You'll not be able to hear it on my computer, but you can play it on your own computer and you can hear it. Um, you can also import different sounds if you want to use them to be used with your scratch cat. Now, let's see if we can get something working. On the left hand side, you can go to code and you can start to pull over some code to make your cat move. So I'm going to just show you how to do some basic controls. If I go into events and say when the green flag is clicked, I want my cat to continually forever move by 10 steps. OK, if I press play. You can see that my cat very quickly has moved to the right hand side of the screen and right off the page, which we don't really want. Right. So let's pull him back to the middle. Um, what we can do is we can use an option called if it's on the edge of the screen bounce. It's under the blue motion blocks near the bottom. And we put that inside our loop and it will continually check if it's on the edge and it will bounce off. So let's see how that's adapted our code. OK, so not so bad. OK, it's moving and hit off the edges and not disappearing off the screen, but it's turning upside down. And that's to do with the cat's rotation style. OK, you can also change this in the blue blocks. Find an option that says set the rotation style. Here it is. OK, and you can choose if you want it to be left or right, not rotate at all 
or rotate in any direction and you just pop that in. Now I'm going to pop that in above my forever loop because it should set the rotation style once and then doesn't need to change it ever again. Okay, let's see how that works. Good. Now the cat looks a little bit like he's skiing because he hasn't been changing between his two different costumes. So what I can do is go to the sounds block and I can choose the block that says next costume. So every time he moves 10 steps, he changes to his next costume. Okay, so it's starting to look a little bit more realistic. However, the cat is going very, very fast. So what I can do is go into control and add in a little weight block after each 10 steps to make him slow down a little bit. Now you can adjust the time on this so that he doesn't look like he's going too slow. So at the moment it's going far too slow. If I change that wait one second to maybe wait half a second, 0 0.5, he's going a little bit faster. I might want to change it again, 0, 0 0.05. And you can see it starts to get better timing. OK, so that's how we do some basic programming. A good thing you can do on Scratch as well is you can duplicate code. So, for example, if I went down and I added a new sprite from the library and chose one that I thought maybe had more than one costume, that sprite has got more than one. So if I click on it, you can see now in the sprite list I've got two, a cat and a bat. OK, if I go into the cat, you can see the code is connected to him, but the bat currently doesn't do anything. So when I press play, the cat is moving, the bat is not, okay? I can copy the same code that I have on the cat across to the bat by dragging and dropping it until you're over the bat, and then you let go, okay? When I press play, oops, well, it's not copied across, wait a minute. Drag and drop it over here, let go. There you go, so you can see it's under the bat now. When we press play, you can see they're both doing the same thing, okay? Now the bat, might not only go left and right because it's flying. So what you could do is allow it to rotate all around the way and maybe add in a block like this. Or actually, if we go into costumes and change his direction, actually motion, let's see if we can set his direction somewhere. Here we go, point in direction, pop that in. Here we go. So we could tell him to start in this angle or this angle wherever we like, okay? And that'll make him point slightly different and bounce off the screens and go upside down and stuff because he's flying. But that's very quickly how you can build up an animation, okay? If you wanted a background, you could go into backgrounds and you could choose a background for them to be in, for example, the castle. It applies a background and then you can play your animation, add in all sorts of sound and stuff. So that gives you an introduction to how Scratch actually works. Okay, so have a play about with it this week and see what different things you can create. Okay, now what I want you to do is to go across to your worksheet you've downloaded from Show My Homework and fill out some of the answers. Okay, what colours are the different blocks? Where um, are specific buttons or what do they look like? And fill it out. When you're finished, the last thing you've got to do today is you've got to do your plenary. So this is your plenary task. Okay, there's four different logos that I've screenshotted from the um, website and I want you to tell me what they are. So number one, number two, number three, and number four, they correspond to the four boxes that are next to the word plenary on your worksheet. Okay, I should say that you'll get all the answers to this worksheet next week, but you can upload your answers to show my homework and feel free to comment to your teacher if you have any questions in the meantime, okay? The last thing I want you to do before you upload is to have a think about whether you've been successful in your learning this week. So can you navigate around the environment successfully? Have you managed to set up your account? And have you managed to create your program, okay? Can you import and draw backgrounds, sprites, or different costumes? Can you rename them? Have you played about with them? Can you swap their direction, etc.? And lastly, can you identify the different categories of code so we can go on to use them in the next week? OK, hopefully you've managed to like this. Put some stars five down to one next to each of the things on your worksheet and um, have happy time playing on Scratch this week. OK, one thing I wanted to show you just before I go is when you've got your animation that you've created for this week, when you go to file, um, and you want to save it to your computer, first thing that's worthwhile doing up here is giving it a name. Okay, so my first animation. Okay, file, saving that to your computer, and you'll notice that it pops up down at the bottom. 
as your scratch, you might need to go into your downloads folder to then copy that somewhere and save it safe for another time for you to be able to look at. Okay, or you can save them directly on.